Jamie Colby, and today I'm driving along the Jersey Shore on a sliver of Barrier Island that took a beating from Superstorm Sandy in 2012. I'm here to meet a family rebuilding from the disaster, and their strange inheritance may end up being their lifesaver. I'm Rick Wenzel. Our family business has been here in Lavalette, New Jersey for generations. I found something in the attic that's going to help us save our business. The Wenzel family is a fixture in this tiny beach community. They're best known for an old ice cream shop and restaurant called Salty's that, like so much of the Jersey Shore, got pummeled by Sandy. Now, Salty's was not your average neighborhood ice cream parlor. We were the largest bulk ice cream distributor for Hershey's ice cream. Every year they would come and give us a golden scoop. You're talking 200,000 gallons of ice cream every summer. What was the traffic like here on a good day, summertime? Salty's was the place to come. There would be a line out the door, sometimes even around the block. It was a nice spot for an evening out. It could be music, it could be hermit crab races. It was always a surprise. Why is it important that Salties come back? It's a really an anchor for our whole community and the people who come to the Jersey Shore. The story of Salties and this strange inheritance begins far from the boardwalk with Britt's grandfather, Gustav Wenzel. An enterprising German immigrant, he opens a bowling alley during the Great Depression in Garwood, New Jersey. Gustav also sells comic books. He may have been his own best customer. He was an avid comic book collector. It was all different genres. It wasn't just science fiction or it just wasn't superheroes. There were Western comic books. There were comic books about baseball players. Gustav's son, Bob, inherits his dad's love of comic books. Bob's favorite chronicles the adventures of a space explorer he will name his son after. My father's favorite cartoon character was named Brick. And uh, here's a picture of one. Hmm, Brick Bradford. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> the rosy cheeks. In 1962, Bob Wenzel moves to the beach and opens Salty's Gifts in Lavalette. Over the years, Salty's evolves into an ice cream shop and restaurant. As a boy, Brick puts in his time at Salty's, but he's determined to strike out on his own. By the time I was 14 years of age, I had started my own bait company. I uh, had a passion for it that just continued to grow. The commercial fishing industry was extremely profitable. It's my first fishery experience. Okay, what are well, we going to do? Uh, we're going to put you right to work. Wait, you want me to wear these? Uh, yes, ma'am, I recommend it. You do? Yes, I uh, do. Okay, well, orange is the new black. While I do a wardrobe change, let's keep the blue fish on ice and bring Britta into this boardwalk empire. It's a stormy day in 1997. It's blowing northeast, 20, 30 miles an hour, wind blowing in rain. A childhood friend notices Brick's fishing boat has come loose from the dock. I was waitressing in a restaurant and I tied it back up. But it, it wasn't just tied up, it was tied up perfectly. Not everyone knows how to tie up a boat properly, especially during a major northeaster. We looked at each other like, you know, my goodness, that's you all grown up, you know, because we had known each other since childhood. One impressive nautical knot, and next thing you know, Brick and Britta tied the proverbial one. In 1997, when Brick's dad retires, he hands the business down to the kids. During the summer, the restaurant does real well. And then when there's no tourists around, the fishing income is what kept us going. Okay, cue the girl and the waiters. All right, Brick, now that I got all suited up, what am I going to do? All right, Jamie, we got these blue fish here, and we're going to have them come down and go into 100-pound totes and get them ready to be shipped out. Oh, they weigh almost 100 pounds, and this guy's <laughs> waving like at that. me. Oh, yep. you got to turn around too, buddy. Yep, you got to get them swimming downstream as they go through. Okay, I'm yep. straightening them out. Straighten them out. Would you mind getting that one? Oh, look at the size of this go. one. Got to swim the right way. You don't get to go to the finer restaurants. Okay, bye. See you. Okay, so now we got to put them in the box over here. Come on. Oh, That's a big one. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. 
These will be on their way to New York in an hour. I have to make a reservation. I still have time. <laughs> Lid. 100 pounds. Yep. Blue fish. Brick tells me each box like this will sell for 80 bucks. And today's total catch is worth about $2,800. All right. Good day's work. Thanks, Rick. No, thank you. I'll see you later. All right. I'll see care. you later. <laughs> There's a saying I have. Fishermen are always starving, but they eat well. Rick and Britta want a safety net. A way to turn the family's seasonal businesses into an enterprise with year-round cash flow. Real estate in this beach community is always a good bet. So they purchase new properties and renovate the family's old ones. When Brick's grandmother dies, they remodel her house as well. After my grandmother passed away, we had to demolish the building. Well, when we took out one of the walls, there were comic books stuffed into the walls, just like insulation. We had a feeling they were worth something, but we really didn't know much about it because I'm not a comic book collector. So they just put the comics away and don't think about them much. They move on to other business ventures. Along the way, they really roll the dice. We dropped insurance that we had carried in the properties. And it was because the insurance premiums had gotten so high. We were looking at over $30,000 in insurance annually. So we decided to take that money, invest it, some in the stock market, some in other pieces of property. A decade and a half go by and their gamble seems to be paying off. Then in the fall of 2012, the Wenzels prepare to celebrate Salty's five decades on the Jersey Shore. This is real popular during the summer. Hermit crabs. As they do on October 22nd, a tropical storm in the Caribbean becomes Hurricane Sandy. And the Jersey Shore is in its crosshairs. We've seen what happens when a storm hits the Jersey Shore, but it was the first time we ever saw a storm of this magnitude. That's next. But first, our strange inheritance quiz question. Which Jersey artist has the most number one hit singles? Bruce Springsteen, Frank Sinatra, or Whitney Houston? The answer in a moment. 